So in this video I'm going to show you how to get on and off a beach. So here's typical beach entry, it's got a sort of turn at the top and then it's got a descent and then a bit of a rise then you turn left to go onto the beach. Now the technique for getting down the hill is pretty simple. First of all with any dune you always want to be going as slowly as you can over the top and then you just put the kind maybe second even third low, don't touch the brakes and just point it down the hill. Because it's sand, because it's rough, the car's going to slide around a little bit, that's normal, you just simply have to um, get used to that. So the descent is in is pretty straightforward. But never go in unless you're certain you can get back up and that the tide um, is going to be in your favour. So always pays just to stop at the top, take a bit of a look and then drive in. So here's what it looks like on the way out. Now to get over sand dunes you use a combination of speed, momentum and tyre pressure. The lower the tyre pressure the less momentum you need. That's the relationship between the two. Now I'm in low range here and the reason for that is because it gives me a close ratio gearbox and the side advantage is that you'll find that all of your stability control and all traction control is switched off in low range. So this graph shows a typical set of gear ratios. You can see that third low is a little bit of a lower gear than second high. So when you're driving from about sort of 0 to 30, 40 k's an hour, you've got first, second, third, fourth to play with in low range, but in high range you'd really only have first and second. So that means that you can select the exact gear ratio you need for any given situation with minimal stress on your vehicle. So your approach to the ascent starts actually on the beach itself and you've generally got a 90 degree so turn to make before you actually get on to the run up to the, uh, to the dune. Now you can't take that too fast because if you do you'll just run wide. What you've got to do is take it as fast as you reasonably can so you stay on line and only begin to accelerate when you're unwinding the steering lock and then you get your momentum once you're actually heading for the dune directly. Now the car will slide around a little bit from here to there, don't overcorrect it, don't fight it, just look straight ahead and keep your steering wheel pointed where you want to go, but don't try and overcorrect the car too much. So we've got this dip to deal before we start the main ascent. Now you can't go flying over that at full speed because you'll actually lose your momentum on the way up as well as overstress your vehicle. So what you do is just as you approach the dip, you start to ease off, that gets weight over the front wheels, and then as the back wheels come over the dip, then you can apply power and you can use that dip to your advantage by just accelerating down it and then up over the top. I started the car in second low and quickly shifted manually into third low. You want to use the highest gear you can to minimise wheel spin and even in automatics that's a good idea to manually control your gears. Automatics can shift when you don't want them to which can lose you traction and momentum. Okay, so we're powering up the dune itself now. All you've got to do now is keep yourself as straight as you can. Don't accelerate or deaccelerate, keep the power constant. As soon as the nose of the vehicle starts to dip, you come over the top, then start to ease off power progressively. So you arrive at the top of the dune as slow as possible. And you want to be doing that for less stress on your car. And also you really often don't know what's over the other side. So arriving as slow as possible is safe. So as with many dunes, you just really can't see over the top, so you've, that's why we wear sand flags, but also it helps you if you've got someone over the top spotting you as well. So you keep straight, and as that nose starts to dip, then you can start to ease off the power, and as usual, there's a bit of a turn, so the slower you're going around the turn, the better. Once the vehicle's facing downhill, then you can massively reduce the power, because gravity helps a lot. The more you turn the steering wheel, the slower you go. But also, as you go out of the ruts, then you're going to go slow as well because there's going to be more resistance. So you've got to turn the steering wheel just enough to keep into the ruts and no more. So you will fail the occasional climb and that's fine. I think it's better to fail one or two um, even more than just keep throwing your car at high speed at, at hills. So when you do fail it, just don't dig in, um, put the car into reverse and come back. Now the thing is, don't use the brakes. You're going to be going back in low range, in slow gear. And if you start using the brakes, you could slide sideways just to the left into that dip there. And here what I'm doing is I'm actually going to sort of line the car up on this dip. I'm going to use momentum to get the car going again. 
I'm going to select second low, go away, quick change into third gear, power, and then that is enough to get us up the hill. So you don't actually need a massive run up after all. So here's the other view, and you can see that the approach is a bit slow, so I actually slow down too much there, and just go up the hill, the line is good, constant speed, but just not enough momentum to get up. Now as soon as I feel those wheels digging in, I come back, because if you just make massive ruts there, you're going to actually make it difficult for your next ascent, because the vehicle is going to bounce, so you really don't want to be digging holes, and you just have to give it up. So back, no brakes, just keep going back, keep going back, I'm kind of judging there as to where the maximum point is, hold it on the brake, don't use the park brake at all, just foot brake, second low, and quick into third, a um, little bit more momentum and up she comes nice and gently. So to finish off let's compare going too fast versus just about the right speed. And I could have gone even slower if I dropped my tyres down to 10 psi. So I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe, share, like etc for all sorts of content on four drives, cars, towing, racetrack and whatever else you guys find interesting. Thanks, bye.